Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Keeping an Eye on the Geopolitical Ball with me, Jamie Shea, Senior Fellow at Friends of Europe. Uh, this week is Inauguration Week, of course, in Washington on Wednesday. Uh, we all look forward to that and hope that the day will pass off peacefully uh, and that Joe Biden will get off to a good start. Uh, and that means that most of us will be glad not to hear the Trump word quite as often as we have over the last uh, four years. Uh, when it comes to domestic politics, uh, Trump's record will probably from the point of view of future historians, not be a good one. The polarization, the refusal to acknowledge the elections, the weakening of America's democratic institutions. But if he gets a zero out of 10 in domestic policy, does that also apply to his foreign policy? Now, I know that many of you will be tempted to say yes immediately and say, well, what about you know the fact he withdrew from the Paris climate deal? Or well, what about the fact he withdrew from the Iranian nuclear deal? Or well, what about the fact that he withdrew from the World Health Organization? and so on and so forth. These, of course, are all true. But today I'd like to take a slightly deeper look than that and see if Trump's foreign policy has really been that bad or that negative. In the first place, Trump has not launched on his watch any new military interventions. And he's the first president in a generation not to have done that. In fact, he largely has kept his promise to bring the troops home from Somalia, withdrawal now complete, Afghanistan down to 2,500, and Iraq also down to 2,500. Indeed, Trump may not have negotiated lasting solutions to these conflicts, but he certainly has not opened any new ones up for the United States. The second thing is Russia. Many of us at the beginning of the Trump years were worried that Trump would do a deal over our heads with President Putin, but it hasn't happened. The US has still remained largely critical of Russia, for example, uh, in condemning the treatment of Alexei Navalny back in prison now that he's returned to Russia. Uh, beefing up NATO's presence in Central and Eastern Europe, spending more money on NATO infrastructure there, uh, and uh, being rather wary that uh, Europe, Germany in particular, does not become more dependent upon Russian uh, natural uh, gas. Putin could hardly look back on the Trump years and see that he's gained much geopolitically from them. Thirdly, I mentioned NATO. Trump has made many threats along the way to pull out of NATO, uh, but he hasn't done so. Uh, he's got the Europeans to spend more on their defense. He's increased, as I said, the American troop presence. There may be some NATO watchers who will believe that ultimately, despite the rhetoric, Trump was rather good uh, for the alliance and its military strength. On China, Trump probably has achieved a lasting legacy uh, in making all of us see China no longer simply as a benign trading partner, but as a, as a geopolitical rival, that where we need, of course, uh, to contain and to constrain China as much as to cooperate with it. Again, he ne didn't necessarily provide the answer how to do that, but he certainly put the challenge durably on the table. And when it comes to trade, uh, uh, Trump renegotiated trade deals like NAFTA, but he replaced them with largely something similar. Uh, there was no trade war with the European Union. The WTO rules continued to apply on both sides, and Trump even managed to pull off uh, a trade agreement with uh, China. So his legacy, to my mind, is not necessarily positive or negative. It's more status quo. It's more continuity than change. And that means that it's a legacy that Joe Biden, with his executive orders coming from Wednesday onwards to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement or to end the ban on Muslims traveling to the United States, that Biden can quite easily begin to unwind as he seeks a new multilateralism. There will be some elements which will be easier to unwind than others. Uh, and in my broadcast next week, uh, I will comment on what the more difficult areas of the Trump legacy will be for Biden moving ahead. But at least he has a level playing field to move on from. And that is a reason for hope and optimism as we wish him well as he begins his presidency. Bye for now. I look forward to seeing you again next week.